you know, sometimes a house rule really tries to reflect something that actually happened on the battlefield, maybe just once or twice, but it's the, the way the rules are written just doesn't allow it to happen. Now, this is a situation where you, you can just write it for a specific scenario, or it could be a broadly applied house rule. Either way, today we're going to take a look at one of these tweaks to kind of make it possible for some of these historical accounts to actually be reflected on the tabletop. Let's go down and take a look. Hello, welcome to today's bolt action basic training house rules video. Now today's house rule is something I've been, it's, it's a house rule I came up with very 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 quickly when I first started learning about bolt action and just really hesitated to mention it. Uh, I just felt like I was just a complainer, you know, when I first came up. Of course I just learned the game, but the more I think about it, the more I study the real battlefield, the more I think this rule is appropriate. So, what am I talking about? Well, it's vehicles and the one inch gap rule. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen images just like this. There isn't a one inch gap there. Oh, sorry, there might be a one inch gap, or maybe a six inch gap, but when you're talking scales, I mean, those guys are right there on the tank. So let's talk about this. Okay. It doesn't make sense uh, from, as far as from a rules perspective, it makes a lot of sense to keep your units separated by more than an inch so that you don't mix the models up accidentally. Makes entire sense there. Uh, <clears throat> even in the case of artillery and infantry, because sometimes you can get them you know, mixed up and you'll accidentally think you know, one of your infantry is an artilleryman or artilleryman is an infantryman and you end up messing up. So one inch gap rule is, is a sound rule. I do not have any problem with it. As a matter of fact, when you look at infantry training manuals, the infantry are, the, the training is stressing distance between men. There's certain formations you adopt to minimize the damage done by high explosive weapons and machine gun fire, but especially high explosive weapons, mortars, howitzers, and all that. That doesn't apply to vehicles. Uh, because, here's the thing, and we're going to look at the Sherman specifically only because there's a lot of classic pictures here in the U.S. of this situation. The Sherman was developed and I, you know, as an infantry support vehicle, right? Much like the infantry tanks of the British. It had a, s a singular feature though, I don't know how many other t uh, tanks had this, a friend of mine explained to me that a lot of tanks had this feature, but Sherman's had an telephone radio in the back of the vehicle, on the outside, on the rear face of the vehicle in a box, so that the infantryman could stand up right next to him on that phone, spotting targets for him. He can remain buttoned up, and he, the infantryman, covered by the tank, hiding behind it, peering out just enough to see the, the threatening machine gun fire, or the, the howitzer, or the, whatever it is that's the threat to the infantry, can tell the commander this is where the threat is and the commander can bring fire to bear without getting out of the hatch and looking with his own eyes and having to rely on just the periscope uh, it makes the reaction time and accuracy much better. So military doctrine in the US it was designed for the infantry to be close to the tanks. Makes a lot of sense. When you look at the infantry and uh, vehicles passing each other on roads there's no room to get that inch gap like we'd see on the scale here in the in the table. Now, <clears throat> why is this important? Well, there are so many situations on the tabletop that I've seen where either myself or mo usually my opponent, um, they get themselves in a position where there just isn't enough room between maybe the side of a building and the tank for them to move their infantry because the infantry is supposed to stay outside of one inch when they especially when they end their move how many times have you seen pictures of trucks and infantry next to each other on the road half tracks and infantry right next to each other in the field it's just it's normal it's the way they they work together okay the vehicles are there to provide shelter 
of from small arms fire, most likely, most of the time, to the infantry. They're going to huddle near them. Yes, there are risks, but that's war has a, is full of risks. So, it makes a lot of sense that you don't you can ignore, and that's what this house rule is. Ignore the one inch gap rule between infantry, artillery, or, sorry, vehicles, and anything else, even other vehicles. Because again, you may need to pass each other, uh, motorcycle, sidecar, vehicle. You can need to pass quick, you know, close by around a tank or around a, a, a truck. Sit. It needs to do that. It's, it shouldn't be blocked simply because it can't get that one inch gap. There are risks. The battlefield is a dangerous place. Passing a friendly vehicle, not such a big deal. Now, enemy vehicles, sure, completely makes sense. Stay away more than one inch. But your friendly vehicles, no. I would suggest not. So, what do you guys think? Tell me below. Let's have a, you know, dis a productive discussion about this. Does it make sense? Now, again, I want to look at this from the pers perspe two perspectives. One is uh, representing history on the tabletop, which is something that I love to do. Okay, But I do want to hear kind of the different perspectives, uh, whether they're for or against this, this house rule, when it comes to game playability. Okay, Because I'm not a game designer by trade. I've dabbled in it here or there, but I've not... I don't have anything published. Sorry, I shouldn't say it. I don't have a game system published. I do have uh, I do have some published work. But anyway, um, the thing that's important is to kind of come to an understanding of what makes sense when it comes to the vehicles and the one-inch gap rule. That's all we're talking about here. So let me know below. Share, like, subscribe, and please, if you can, uh, definitely sh uh, at least like the video. Help the channel grow. All right. The more people we are exposed to the channel, the more knowledge gets out there, the more ideas get out there, and especially if our comments grow, the more the community ha gets, you know, basically benefits because they're hearing or reading the input that, from all of you guys. Thank you very much. See you in the next video. Bye.